Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to class three of this thing called you. We always begin in consciousness. I find it's very helpful to always begin in prayer. And for us, that means an affirmative prayer that we call spiritual mind treatment. The class is happening on Wednesday nights. And the first step is to know. To know the presence and the power of the one is right here and right now. It's beyond any construct of time or space. It is life and light and love. It's an energy and a creative force. It is absolute. It is infinite. And out of that light, out of that love, out of that life, we came. Spirit manifested itself as us. And so take a moment and just breathe that in. We are beings of light. We are beings of love. We are eternal. We are perfect, whole, and complete in every way. And being in that space, we know that whatever God is, we are. We have everything that God has. So right here and right now, we know what we need to know. We assimilate what we need to assimilate. We live what we need to live, to live that divine life that is ours now, a life of health, a life of prosperity, a life of love, a life of joy, a life of success. That divine life that is our birthright. We know that it is ours. We know that it is what we are. And we are grateful for this Center for Spiritual Living Asheville, for this wonderful class, for this amazing teaching, for this opportunity to see ourselves clearly and to be the divine being that we were always meant to be. And in that state of gratitude, we just turn it loose, let it go. We've done our work because the work is in consciousness. The work is knowing. And the only thing that can happen is that life takes that, brings it into form, and gives it right back to us. And together we say, and, and so it is. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I'm so glad to see you all on a holiday. Yeah. Yay. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Did you have a good weekend? Yes. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, who's here for the very first time? Welcome, welcome. Anybody else? Welcome. We bought our distributor out of books. Oh, oh great, great. Uh, did anybody get books from Barnes & Noble locally this week? No. Rumor has it that we bought Barnes & Noble out a couple weeks ago, but that they restocked. So if anyone is looking for a book, then you can get it at uh, Barnes & Noble. You may want to call Amazon.com. Uh, and I don't know when uh, DeVores is going to restock it for us. So I just think it's great that we bought them out. And, uh, uh, and we are a mighty force to be reckoned with. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How are you doing with the reading? <coughs> love it, love it. Oh, love it. Good, good, good. Good. Oh, yeah. Margaret. Oh, yes. Um, if you could clarify, um, it's in chapter 4. Uh, it starts on page 28. It's like clarifying the process. He's talking about, about um, the gradual re-education of your whole mental reaction and the accumulated experience of your subconscious mind. Yes, he's not speaking highly of the accumulated experience of your subconscious mind. He's speaking about uh, race consciousness, things that you might have picked up along the way, maybe things that you got from your biological family or the wonderful education system that we have in this country, those kinds of things. And what, what he was saying, because you brought that up to me earlier, and I, I looked at it so I would know what you were talking about, um, He's saying that, that this is a process. It's a process of changing subjective belief systems. 
and what are subjective belief systems, they are not conscious. They are, we don't say unconscious because there's nothing unconscious. The unconscious is not unconscious. It's very aware. We're just not paying attention to it on a conscious level. So the subjective belief system is not a conscious awareness. When you experience something and you have a reaction and you didn't even think about that reaction, but in hindsight you can see where you've had that reaction before. Maybe someone cuts you off in traffic and you get angry. Do you ever have that? It's an interesting <laughs> reaction. No. But, 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 but what, what seems like a logical reaction to have if someone cuts you off in traffic, you are afraid that there is danger and that you're going to be hurt, right? But rather than being afraid and then being relieved that you're not hurt, a lot of people get angry. And that's always fascinated to me is what's up with the anger? Well, if the way that we've learned to handle danger is to get angry, then that will trigger off a reaction of anger when we think something's going to hurt us rather than, oh, wow, boy, that was a close one. I'm so glad that, we're, that I'm okay. And maybe even a higher re response that would be, I know that you are blessed and you are safe in all of your crazy driving, and I know that everybody around you is safe, rather than attacking the person. Oh, my gosh, what if we blessed them, gave them a little white light, a little love, maybe they would calm down a little bit, maybe they wouldn't, but we can at least put our energy in the mix to have safety instead of fear and instead of anger. So let's say we grew up in a family where anger was used to control and manipulate people. I don't know if anybody might have grown up in a family like that. Yes. So then we learn that whenever our needs are not being met, whenever we don't feel safe or comfortable, we flip into anger to try to control and manipulate the circumstance. And all of that is a subconscious, I won't say unconscious, but I'll go with subconscious. All of that is a subconscious belief system and reaction. And what he's saying is, he's, he's saying that that this is so simple, and that's what, what kind of throws us. He's saying this is so simple, all you have to do is figure out your subjectified belief system and change it. <laughs> and that's why sometimes we read it and go, what? <laughs> so if we can notice when the anger comes up, Wow, that's interesting. I'm angry. I was driving down the road, be bopping, singing, and doing fine, and now all of a sudden I'm screaming and flipping people off and honking on my horn and all of that. Huh, what's up with that? And so what he's saying is to use your intuition and to follow it back to where that's coming from, what's fueling that, and what's fueling that is a belief that we're not safe, and that the way to be safe is to control our environment, and the tool that we've used to try to control it is anger. So if we were going to start working on that subjectified belief system, how would we want to flip it around? I am safe. I am safe, and yet he says in that same little part of the book that this is not going to be handled yeah. by simple affirmations. Sure. So. It's not going to be handled by affirmation. Come on. Where was the affirmation queen? She says, if I say it a thousand times a day, it'll be so. He's saying that you want to go to a deeper level of healing. And so in this idea of safety, how could we work on ourselves to, to try to bring about a deeper healing? And that's what this whole class and book is about, and it's different than our usual classes, which is cause and effect, law of circulation, law of manifestation, this law, that law, spiritual law, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have diagrams and all that stuff. But this is a class about healing. So how can we use this idea that said, wow, I just went ballistic because someone started going over into my lane and I was totally out of control. How can I help myself here? Breezy. 
Uh, well, you can start with the affirmation, but go further than that and work on a feeling. So if you know that it's a safety issue, then you can work on generating a feeling. And what else? Joe? Uh, maybe just catch yourself in the act right when you're about to do it at that, that cusp right there. And, and that is the best, is not to go there. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. And as we get better at this, we catch ourselves faster. One of the things that I've done is kind of had a dialogue with myself. Well, I can see how uh, my father <coughs> may or may not have been drinking my entire life, uh, but he certainly was a rageaholic along with a uh, so-called a recovered alcoholic. He was a rageaholic and he used that rage to try to control his environment. So I could ask myself, gee, isn't it interesting that you're, you're copying the behavior of your father? Did it work for him? Well, hell no, it didn't work for him. Of course not. It just made things worse. Oh, well, isn't it interesting that you're really seeking peace and safety and serenity, and you're using a tool that doesn't work? Otherwise, we'd be giving classes on the art of raging, because that's the way to get what you want, and it doesn't work. So I talked to myself, and I, I, frankly, I kind of embarrassed myself a little bit by going, isn't it interesting that you're mimicking your father at his worst? Oh, jeez. <laughs> And so that gets my attention and gives me a willingness to let it go because I really don't want to do that. And then I can move into this idea that says, what is it that so scared you when the car started coming over? Well, sometimes things would come out of the blue and hit me. Sometimes things would happen to me. They would come flying at me out of nowhere and so I have to be on guard to protect myself. I mean, is this just my story or is this related to anybody else? Okay. So then I would move into, well, you know you're a powerful, creative, spiritual being, alive and well on planet Earth, and you know that you're the one who puts the net out to bring those things in that seem to be coming out of the blue and hurting you, and that really there's no truth to that that the only thing that's true is that you're creating your reality, and if you put out anger and fear, you might as well pull over to the side of the road right now and pull it <coughs> together before you get back on the highway because you're gonna be bringing in more anger and fear. What is the part of you that needs to remember that you are always safe, that you are always protected, that you have legions of angels watching out for you, and that all is well? And usually by then, I'm all, Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I, I was out of my mind, which I was, and I don't need to do that. And now what Ernest is saying is, don't be surprised if it's a process and it happens again, and it happens again, especially if you've been doing this for decades. Don't be surprised if you do it again and again and again, but each time, don't make yourself wrong, but look for where is that coming from, what do you really want? Is this an effective way to get it? And if it's not, how can you get it? So that's the, the thing he was addressing, Margaret, in that it's so simple. This is all you have to do. All you have to do is change the way you see the world. All you have to do is let out some of those um, buried fears and upsets and allow that healing light of love to fill you up and change how you how you are. That's all. That's all you have to do. Susanna. Barbara, in in one place he says you can't do it with the volition of your intellect. Then he later he says that you are to take a more direct and simple path from your intellect to your true self. Right, he says you can't do it with the volition of your intell yeah. intellect. So he says you can go from your intellect where you can't do it. Yeah. To your, true self, to your true self, which is that intuitive part of you that he says always knows mm -hmm. right. who you are. Right. And that's where we want to go. And that's why, in looking at this, this class, I realized this wasn't going to be a lecture class. This has to be a process class. It has to be somewhere where we can let go of the conscious mind and our desire to, um, to understand and to be in control and to to have all of that, and to just let go and move into this other state. 
this other state where our defenses are down, where we can let ourselves be loved, and we can shift at a deeper energetic level. So in that, how were you last week after the process? Did anyone have trouble getting home? What process? Good. I just know I drove very slowly. You drove very slowly home and you were not pulled over. That's great. Right. <laughs> That's great. And we spent more time grounding you last yes. week. Mm -hmm. But how was your week? It was good. Busy. Good. Busy. <laughs> B. It was interesting. I found myself needing to sleep. Sleep. Um, I took a lot of naps, and they were naps, they weren't the usual ones, they were very deep. And then at one point, um, when I woke up, it was like something shifted. And instead of, last week was on um, freedom. Mm -hmm. And I had always thought of freedom as freedom from something. When I woke up after this deep sleep, all of a sudden it was like a light bulb. I'm free too. And it was incredible because I have a neighbor that I've been having issues with. And so I, I then said to myself, I am free to love, blah, blah, blah. Within two days, everything is just hunky dory. Wonderful. Wow. It was just Wonderful. incredible. That is cool. And it wasn't anything I did. Right. It's never about what yeah. we do. Yeah. That's the, the illusion that if you do, 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 yeah. then really then you're just do, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because for, for months I've only been sleeping like two hours a night or three hours a night and sometimes not at all. And since last week, it didn't even occur to me. I've been sleeping like eight, nine hours a night. Yeah. And you went from two hours to eight or nine hours, and it didn't, you didn't notice? You've got to understand. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> good. Yeah, but I mean, I'm all rested, and it's just, a, it, it didn't even occur to me. Yay. Yeah. Wonderful. Drew and then Vivian. Yeah, on that same note, I, sometimes I, I will stay up for two days. And just I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Nothing, and, and I noticed that I was sleeping really sound. I'm gone. I'm like, this is nice. <laughs> oh, what do I have? You know, I'm, You're safe. Yeah. Safe enough to sleep. Yeah. yeah. I actually I actually have that in part of my spiritual mantra. Mm. Safety. Yes. Yeah. That is most people's core issue. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting. I had the complete opposite. I was so energized all week that I hardly slept at all, and I wrote, wrote, wrote all week. Great. <laughs> Great. Great. Who else? Okay, Michaela. I want you to know if you put your hand up, that's enough. I always see you, and you don't have to wave <laughs> it. Settled, more in their skin, better on the planet. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think we're all star people, and showed up on planet Earth for some reason, and that's why we've always been different. People come see me and they go, I don't know, I just I don't feel like this is home, this planet. I go, well, of course not. You're from the Pleiades or wherever, you know. It's okay. It's okay. You're just here for a visit. And enjoy the tour. And then they go. be okay. We're all just okay. <laughs> so wonderful. So I want you to know I'm going to do the process a little bit different tonight. And um, I'm just kind of checking you out to make sure that you, you handled the last one um, well. Because if you were still having trouble, I probably wouldn't be making the shift. But, but we're, you're going to hear it. It's just going to be a little bit different than it has been up until now. Those of you who are new, we take a break and come back and turn all the lights out, light a candle, go down in a very deep um, guided relaxation, 
and then we uh, listen to words of truth and open up and just allow it to come in, or there are a lot of people who just leave and go flying out in the universe somewhere, <laughs> and then we've got to bring them back, bring them back. Linda. I hate to be so real, but could we be sure the cell phones are off? Sure, that's Thank good. You. And where's Steve Worthing? He was going to turn off all my coffee pots tonight. Yeah. I'll turn it off. Thank you. We're going to turn <laughs> off all the coffee pots yeah, because the water made this funny rumble. We're going to turn all the air conditioning off. Oh, yeah. So if you get hot, just relax into it. It's nothing like a sweat lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Eva. Oh, yes, that would be your job is to make sure the light in the men's room is on. <coughs> And the fan, and if you're no in there and the light time. goes off, you may want to make yourself no known. <laughs> okay. Any other questions about the reading? Do you understand that we're we're looking, this whole class is focused on allowing ourselves to heal, and I believe to go back into the space where we should have always been. You know, I have this idea that every baby that comes on this planet will be welcomed in, told how precious it is, how perfect it is, how, how welcome it is, and have enough to eat and be safe and be able to keep their joy going on. So if for some reason at some time we didn't have that and we went out of that space, this class is about letting us go back to our rightful state of being blissed out, being in our joy, and being in love, which if you've studied Louise Hay or, at all, you know that that will have a profound physical healing on your body. I know that it will have an amazing impact on your finances, that it will certainly shift all of your relationships. You cannot be a love muffin and be in relationship with people who are cranky. It doesn't work. So it shifts your relationships, it shifts your, your job, your, your thoughts, everything. It changes you back to that state that you are, that, that is your true nature. I'll put it that way. And, and any, so any other questions about the reading? One of the things that, that he uses as an example and then I get to get all Bible on you, which I, I enjoy at times, is the story of the prodigal son. And if you remember that, that's the story of the very wealthy man who had two sons. And the, the older son said, hey, I want my money. I want my inheritance now. I don't want to wait until you keel off. And in the Bible, they lived a long time. <laughs> so he's going, I want to be able to spend my money while I'm still young and can enjoy it. So the father loved him, gave him his, his inheritance. He went out and he partied on. And he spent it all. And when he spent all of his money, he ended up starving, uh, sleeping with the swine, not being okay at all. And he got this idea. He said, even the servants in my father's home have more than I have now. I will go back home, and I will ask my father to forgive me and take me in and let me work as a servant and just let me live and, and uh, be okay, because I'm not okay. And so what happens is he's going back to the father's house, and the father spots him and says to the other son who stayed there, kill the fatted calf, throw a party, let everybody know my son has come home. And so rather than um, being as good as one of the servants, he was welcomed back because it is his nature it is who he is to be the son. Even if he has screwed everything up, and I love this teaching because of that, you cannot screw it up no matter how much you think you have done, no matter how full your closet is. You cannot change your divine nature and that which is rightfully yours, which is everything. So he comes back, the father throws a party, now the second son gets a little pissy and says, hey, what about me? I've stayed here and worked all this time, and you never threw me a party. And the father says, don't you know that everything I have is already yours? So there's two ways to look at it. One is you go out and you get crazy and you do what most of society would think is squander all of your assets, 
mess everything up, lose everything, and still you haven't lost everything, you're welcomed back and the party is thrown, or you stay there and you stay vigilant, you keep doing your work, and everything is already yours. So whichever path you take, you still end up with everything is already yours. And so many of us hold on to this idea that says, there's something wrong with me, I've made mistakes, I have to be punished for them, I can't have it all. You know, you people just don't really know who I am. And what the story says is it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how poorly you are thinking of yourself. That your divine nature is stable and steady and your inheritance, meaning that all that spirit has as you is still all that there is. You've got it. You can't get rid of it. You can't lose it. I heard another story um, back in the day of ships crossing the Atlantic. And I know personally I had one of my relatives who jumped on a ship with the police chasing them <laughs> and uh, worked for passage to get to America. But many, many people saved and saved and saved and got a ticket for the boat. It took weeks to cross the ocean and they sailed to America. And there's a story, I don't know if it's a true story, but I would imagine that it is. There's a story of a man who saved enough money to get on the boat and knew that he didn't have any more money, so um, he packed cheeses and breads that he could eat on the boat that would, would not go bad because he didn't have, he spent everything he had on the ticket. And so whenever everyone would go into the dining room, and they would have these lovely, beautiful meals, he would go off and he would eat his cheese and his bread because he knew he had that. And finally, someone came out and said, why are you sitting out here eating cheese and bread when we're all in there having this wonderful meal? And he said, I spent all my money on the ticket. I didn't have any leftover. I, I had cheese and bread, so I brought it, and I've got to live on that until we die. And the person said to the man with the cheese and the bread, don't you know, all the meals are included. <laughs> and so I wonder, you know, how we are trying to hoard our resources or just make it through because if we let people know that we don't really have what we think they have, and they don't have anything that we don't have, but we don't have it, then we will be less than. And instead, the truth is, is that we've already got it. We can go into the dining hall with everyone else. We can have the beauty, the, the prosperity, the joy, the success of life just because we already have the ticket. And our ticket is physical incarnation on planet Earth. We are already here, which means we get to enjoy life. I never understood philosophies that said you have to deny yourself. I was never into fasting. Forgive me. <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out. Why in the world do we have to deny ourselves? Traditional religions. You, you are not supposed to have sex and you're not supposed to enjoy sex. You're not supposed to drink. You're not supposed to dance. You're not supposed to laugh too loud. You're not supposed to have a good time. That, to me, felt so wrong about what life is. <laughs> Life is meant to be enjoyed. It's like, you know, the lilies of the field. They're all taken care of. They're reigned in more beauty than all of Solomon. Yes. And so how often do we, because of our subjectified belief systems, our unhealed stuff, deny ourselves, thinking that we don't have what it takes to get what we want, what everybody else seems to have, we don't get to have that. What is up with that? And how can we track that back through our intuitive wisdom, our inner communication, our fearless inventory of ourselves, and take a good look at ourselves and say, where's that coming from? And does it work? Is it helping? Do we want to pursue this tact of self-denial? You know, what was that movie with uh, Dan Brown with the the whipping, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. all of that stuff that, that self-flagellation. Oh, Da Vinci Code, yes, self-flagellation, yes. But but how do we do that where we don't use a whip? 
I mean, what other ways do we whip ourselves with the knows you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't even show up. What are you doing? You know, we have these voices in our head that beat us up. <coughs> so how do we keep ourselves from accepting the divine birthright and inheritance that is rightfully ours, that no matter how much we have squandered, and I believe there are squanderers in the room, and it's okay. If you want to know something that squanders and wastes, it's called nature. Mm -hmm. Nature makes a whole tree full of apples in the hopes of getting one of those apple seeds to grow somewhere away from it. So it makes these wonderful apples that the birds and the animals will take and they'll eat it and they'll drop the seeds or they'll, they'll pass through their bodies or however that apple gets planted. Nature is extravagant in its waste. I love that. So if you think that you're wasteful or you have been wasteful, I go, yay. That's the plan for a lot of growth. Constriction, on the other hand, holding on, is not the plan for growth. It's the plan for illness. What happens when your body constricts, when your blood doesn't flow, when you don't digest, when you can't breathe? That's, that's a, a formula for illness and even death. So whatever story you have told yourself about why you shouldn't, have all of these wonderful things, be the amazing being that you were made to be, that you want to be, those are not the truth. And they come from some kind of either a race belief, and don't think you're immune to what people are thinking. Holy moly, just check yourself out over the holidays. I don't know why I'm crazy. You're crazy because everybody around you is crazy. So it could be a race belief, it could be a family belief, it could be something that you picked up along the way or something that you just made up right here. Whatever it is, if it says anything less than you are perfect and pure and wonderful and beautiful and fantastic, then it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not the truth. And so the stories that we make up start to <coughs> take us on this journey of how can we shift deep inside of us. I saw a guy, he wrote a book called Radical Forgiveness. Yes, I saw him at a Silomar, Colin Tipping, and I saw him pick up a very petite uh, female minister on the stage in front of a thousand people and start to rock her and tell her that she was perfect. And she started to sob. And I thought, that is exactly what everybody needs. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a clear pure energy that will hold us and tell us that we're okay, that we are loved, that we haven't done anything wrong, we haven't screwed this up, that everything is still fine. And when we can let that in, were you there? Yeah, you saw that, yeah. It was, it was amazing, you know? If, if, if for those of you who really love the emotional process, it was amazing. And so when we can let that energy get into us at a very deep level, it changes us. It changes where our thoughts and feelings and beliefs come from into a healthier, more stable foundation instead of the kind of energy. Okay? Good, good, good. I love what he says about you cannot build sanity and happiness with e evil, a devil, hell, and sin. You can't do that. And yet, how many of us might still be holding on to a little tidbit of that? Well, that Donald Trump, he is the <laughs> devil incarnate. No, he's not. No, he's not. <coughs> that neighbor, that dog, they're pure evil. No, they're not. Everything is either perfect spirit or it's not. And if it isn't, we couldn't be here having the conversation. 
John has often said that our only job is to see the presence of spirit in every moment of our lives. That's it. That's all we have to do. And so what Ernest is saying in this idea of the process of healing is that if you have an idea of good and evil, oh, this is good, and sometimes we play with it in that, well, that Bernie Sanders, he's just pure good. God, I love that guy. Be careful, because then there's got to be the balance of somebody's got to play the bad guy. And then you're living in a world of duality instead of oneness. And when you move into the world of duality, it's not a big jump before there's the good part of you and the bad part of you. And if there is a good and a bad part of you, it's not going to be too long before you're going to have to punish the bad part of you. And so we want to very much look at how we hold that belief system. Maybe we translate it into more metaphysical languaging. We have, well, we have the right spiritual path, you know. Everybody else is just nuts. Jeez, all that pain and suffering and evil and punishment and all of that, that's just wrong. They're so judgmental. <laughs> no, we have the path that's really good for us right now. That's all we've got, is where we are, be here, right now, now. Be here now. That's all we've got. Whatever anyone else is doing is their business. And it's interesting because if we judge other people, what are we going to get? Judgment. We're going to get judged. If we criticize other people, what are we going to get? Criticism. Criticize. And if we don't want the best for someone else, what are we going to get? We're going to get less than the best. This is a very selfish teaching, and I'm, I'm all with David Seabury, the art of selfishness. Let's be selfish. Let's bless everybody. Let's see them in the light, in the love, and wish that they have everything that their hearts desire. I found that to be a wonderful way to get over divorces, <laughs> is to wish the other person the best. That that was my only ticket out. I mean, after the lawyers had had all of their fun. <laughs> my only emotional ticket out was to wish only good for that person. To see them in the arms of their beloved. To see them with money piled up all over them. Healthy, happy, clear. To see them having the life of their dreams. And then I could have the life of my <coughs> dreams. But I couldn't have the life of my dreams while I secretly harbored ill will toward that person, who God knows may have deserved it, but I just <laughs> was hurting myself. I was only hurting myself. And so when we realize that there is no, um, no outside deity that wants to harm us, and that's a, that's a really big idea on this planet. Mm -hmm. That there is something out there that's going to get you. And when we can start to let go of that and realize that there's not, there's not a force for harm or a force for badness, there's only this logical sequence of events that when they put something out, they're going to get that back. Like John Lennon's song, Instant Karma is going to get you. We don't have to be the karma police. We don't have to be the consciousness police. The only thing that we need to do is be aware of our own consciousness and wish the best on everybody else, including that they bypass the whole instant karma thing. That they have an immediate healing and they release anything and are fresh and new in their now moment. So when we can go from there's an outside power that's going to hurt me, things can happen to me out of the blue. There's something that is all powerful, all knowing, omnipotent, omniscient, uh, um, omnipresent, sees under the covers, knows what I did, even when I was blacked out and don't even remember, it knows what I did, all of that stuff. When we can start letting that go and know that there is no such force in the universe, that there is only that which loves us, 
There is only that which lifts us. There is only that which can only wish our highest and best for us. How can spirit withhold anything without compromising its own integrity and falling apart? It's impossible. Spirit must, if you want to use dualistic language, in which this book is filled with dualistic language, and frankly, it's a breath of fresh air just for a few minutes. <laughs> if you want to use dualistic language, the only thing that, can, that spirit can want for you is what spirit wants for itself. So the will of God in your life is only the highest and best of spirit in form as you. So what is that? Love, health, prosperity, wholeness, joy, having a great time on planet Earth, having everything that we want, not when we've grown enough for it, but right now. I haven't seen spirit do a lot of waiting. There's a process of time, but it doesn't feel like waiting. You know, be careful with your idea of I need to be patient. Do you? Or do you need to be clear? Yes. Yeah. You can quote me on that. <laughs> Barbara Waterhouse says, do you need to be patient or do you need to be clear? So we're moving into a, uh, an idea of our physical body. And in the beginning of the book, it was very much about, you are this wonderful being. You are light and love and all is well. And then it moves into a little bit of freedom. And now he's talking about there's a process in this healing. It's got to do with subjectified belief systems. You need to look at yourself, check out your level of criticism and upset, because with whatever upset you meet out into your day, you're going to get. And then he moves into this idea of your physical body. And I want to talk about that for a little bit, because I've found this to be very, very helpful. He says there is a presence of the divine in every cell. There is a flow <coughs> of spirit in and through your physical body. And he says that it's your cell, it's your organs, it's your tissues, it's your systems. And I found it very, very helpful at times to really acknowledge that light of spirit in my body. I know the body is an effect and, and all of that, but it's an effect of spirit, it's a manifestation of spirit, it's filled with spirit. So if I am feeling that fullness of spirit, I'm going to have a different experience in my physical body than if I'm feeling depleted or broken or something else. And sometimes I'll actually turn that around and I'll go, Spirit is moving through me. I am uplifted by all of life. My body is a temple of light, and I am filled with energy and beautiful on top of it. And I'll get this energy going to where I'm feeling a movement in my body. I think that sometimes we, we constrict and we hold back. I don't know if we're trying to fight back time, or we think we've only got a certain amount of energy, or we don't want to move our joints too much because we think we've only got a certain number of bends in them. You know? What is it that we're thinking of when we pull back from life? We think we have a limited tool and that if we use it up, we won't have any more. So we've gone from we are a point of the infinite in manifest form to oh no, I've only got a limited tool. And I find if I really get a hold of that and see my body as light, feel that movement of energy through me, that it shifts my experience of, and I'm not in my body, my body's in me, of, of, of having this physical form and being focused in time and space. And I'm wondering, have you ever done that? Yes. Good. Yes. This week. Good, because yes. you read it in the book? I, I'm not sure what the cause was. I, I, this, um, I walked out of my medita morning meditation um, and I was, I am love, I am light, I am every single cell in my body. And I spent the morning that way. 
Imagine the, uh, the healing power of that, because there is a, a divine nature of every cell of our body. It's the natural blueprint, yeah. and it doesn't matter what's happened to it up until now. It can go back just like that, go back into its natural state, and so when we give it a little boost of light and love and motion, because our bodies are constantly moving, not, not necessarily physically, but just the, the oxygen and the blood and the lymph system and all of that, our bodies are, are always moving. If we can allow ourselves to open up to that instead of, oh, I don't know, I already got up once today. <laughs> <laughs> then it actually is a healing experience instead of a depleting experience. You know that if you put energy out, what happens? You get energy back. Yes. And that your body very much listens to whatever you say verbally or whatever you think. Your body will listen. People can be hypnotized and turned into ducks. People can be hypnotized and they can be told that they've been burned and they will develop a burn instantly. People can, under that same hypnotic state, be told that there was no burn and the burn heals just like that. People can have fake surgery where they are told that they had surgery and they didn't. And they heal every bit as much as the people who, ha excuse me, who had the surgery. The body is constantly listening to what we say to it. So consider... I like to, to play, um, you remember the Pac-Man? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like to see every cell of my body like that little smiley face. <laughs> and then every cell in my body has light coming out of it. Every cell in my body has a smiley face on it. Every cell in my body has a wisdom and an intelligence. And do you know that that we used to be taught that the brain of the cell was inside of the cell. You know, you had a nucleus. And, you know, they found that that is not true. The brain of the cell is in the skin, the outer cell membrane. Yes, Michaela, you can put that on a test. She's going, <laughs> <laughs> The brain of the cell is on the cell membrane, and that it has actually hundreds of little tiny crystals all over it, and that the communication happens from the cell membrane to other cell membranes. They talk to each other. And that if you want to make a cell sick, what you do is put it in a sick environment, and it'll get sick and die. And you can take a sick cell and take it out of a sick environment and put it into a healthy cell, and as long as it's not stone cold dead, it will get better and heal. So what kind of an environment are you putting the cells of your body in? If you wake up in the morning and you start going through your litany of ills and pains and things that are wrong, then that's the environment that you're going to put in your cell, in your, in your body. And if you can just take a little bit of time, just close your eyes for a minute, we're not going to do this in the process, but just take a minute and see your body as formed by millions and millions of little balls of light. And they look a little different because some of them are organs and some are fluid and some are bone. <clears throat> but each one has a light that emanates out of it because each cell comes from the light. Each cell is the light. And so as that perfect and divine cell, it has everything that it needs because it's spirit in form as that cell. It knows what to do because the intelligence of all of life is manifest as that cell now. And then feel the movement of it all because you're not solid and hard. You are a flow of energy and light and just feel that. Everybody happy, everybody working together, everybody coming together with their own special peace 
as that organ, as that system, as that part of you, divine wisdom guiding the way, making it all work. And what you get out of that is the reflection of this vibrant, healthy, whole, physical body. Because the truth is, is that you're a body of light, of intelligence, of wisdom, of flow. So come back. How did that feel? Lovely. Yeah, lovely. That can make pains go away. It can make puffiness go away. <laughs> Drew. Uh, with all of this, I was, uh, this Japanese researcher, I forget his name, uh, freezing water. Masaru uh, Omoto. Okay. Putting a, a label on, I yes. hate you on a glass, and I love you on a glass. Yes. And not just talking to it, but just putting a blind label. Right. That nobody knows what it was. Right. And how they froze. Right. Like that. And we're like, how many percent water? Right. I mean. Right. So when you look in the wow. mirror and say, I hate you, you are dismantling the very essence of your physical form. You're creating illness and awfulness. And when you look in the mirror and say, I love you, you are turning into millions of little crystals that are beautiful and perfect. And they hear you. Pardon me? And they hear you. And they hear you. They really do hear you. Yes. So play with that. Play with that whole thing of light, because I know a lot of you really like the, you are the light, be the light. Take it all the way into every cell of your body to everything that you may hold is not as well as it once was, or as good as you wish it was. Instead of putting that energy in, put in the energy of light and wisdom and love and joy. I'm looking at Laura. She's making a little baby back there. It's a baby of light. <laughs> I was thinking when you were saying about the little different lights. I was like, yeah. it's a baby light. Yeah. <laughs> so, any questions? I sure. just wanted to make a comment that uh, in my treatments, I uh, mm -hmm. I know that my cells are replaced daily, you know, yes. within my body, and so I always replace them with healthy, healthy, well-functioning, happy cells, the best cells ever. Right. And that's what my joy feels like. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Scientists are in a quandary as to if we've created a pancreas that doesn't work, we keep recreating it. Why do we re recreate it that it doesn't work? Right. You know, we're making brand new cells. They're, they're coming out of the whole consciousness of stem cells. They're perfect. And yet somehow we shove them down into the old patterns. patterns. And, and people will say, oh, well, it's genetics. They have proven that you can open up the <coughs> genetics and you can close them down. And so you open up genetics that say, I'm healthy and happy and I live a long, wonderful life. I wake up in the morning, I'm feeling great. I can do whatever it is I need to do. And they will open wide up. And you can shut down the ones that you may have picked up along the way that say the lie. It's all up to us what we focus on and what we energize. It's fascinating to me. And the very fact that they're proving all of this is, is for me, is really great because I love the validity. <laughs> so after the break, we're going to do our process. And right now, we're going to do our prosperity acceptance so we don't have to, so we, we, um, so we have all of the time after the break to be process full. By the way, we have oh, almost 200 flyers around town for May McCarthy. Has anyone seen them? I don't know where they are. But <laughs> she's coming this Sunday, so if you would like to take some more flyers and just give them to a friend, put them up somewhere. Um, nobody's seen any. There's 200 of them out there, so we've got some more up here for you. Take a deep breath. And continue to breathe deeply. 
And we give from our fullness. We give from trust that life is a blessing and that there's more than enough for all. We give out of that sense of knowing that if we put it out there, it gets multiplied and comes back to us. We give from a point of love for this center, for all that has, it has given us and all that it gives to so many. And so taking that gift in hand, what I know is that God is the source of all, all life, all experience, and all supply. I know that money is God in action. It's the flow of life. It's the movement. It's the tool that we use to experience the blessing of this life. I know that we deserve to experience life as a blessing. We get to go where we want to go and buy what we want to buy, have what we want to have, and do what we want to do. And all of life supports us in that. It's already been given. We've already got the ticket, and all of the bennies are already included. Yeah. I know that we are blessed. I know that we are blessed with infinite supply, absolute love, perfect health and joy. And I know that each one of us comes together this night to make this Center for Spiritual Living Asheville all that it was ever meant to be. It is a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom that touches the lives of all who call it home. And so it is. Hold that energy. Hold the energy. We are at the point of creation. We are the masters of our fate. We are the captains of our ship. We determine our destiny. We are not as weak as the weakest one. We are as strong as the strongest. We are as rich as the richest. It is our divine inheritance. It has already been given. And so right here and right now, we open wide up and say yes. Right here and right now, we move into a sense of gratitude for all that life has. We are rich beyond measure. We are living the good life, and we are blessed. And so I know that everything in these baskets is blessed, because every time we give anything, that which we are, the light, the love, the wisdom, the happiness, spirit as us, goes shooting out with that gift. There is only one. So I see it as an energy of light that pours forth from each one of us, filling up this room from the floor to the ceiling and all between the walls. This air is rich and blessed with God as us. And whenever we let spirit loose in the world, things happen. So right here and right now, we are touched, we are blessed, and we are healed. And you cannot keep God locked up in a room no matter how great. So out it goes to go around this planet and touch and bless and heal every being in this world and then to shoot out into the stars to continue its good and <coughs> holy work. I know that that energy is always here and always now, touching every one of us here tonight, everyone who has ever been here, and everyone yet to come. And so it is. So it is. Thank you. <laughs> the air conditioners are off. So if you're warm, think cool. Nice cool breeze. Great. David, Joe, and Michaela. For those of you who have not uh, been here before, the candle is just because I love fire. <laughs> and uh, there's nothing to do. You don't even have to listen to my voice. You don't have to do what I say. If you want to, you can listen to my voice and do what I say. But this really is your thing. So let's make sure everybody's got their cell phones off. Everybody's cell phone is the, the volume of the ringer is off. 
if you're like a neurosurgeon on call tonight, you can vibrate it, but otherwise, go ahead and just make it quiet. <coughs> And what we're going to do is start off by taking a deep breath and letting it out. <clears throat> and continue to breathe in and to let it go. It's such a gift that we do to give our bodies oxygen. So take a nice, long, deep breath. And then let it go, and just as it goes, just let go. And continue breathing. Nice deep breath at your own pace. And maybe every time you breathe in, you could just visualize your body getting a little lighter, a little more oxygen, a little happier. And as you exhale, just Set the intention that you breathe out what is no longer needed in your physical body. <clears throat> and we begin to relax. Bring your awareness to the top of your skull, the top of your scalp, right where the hair grows out, right where the hair used to grow out. <laughs> and as you focus on that little patch of skin, the very top of your head, that crown chakra, simply be aware and relax. Most people don't even know that they're tense at the very top of their head until they relax. And as you are, relax the top of your head, bring your awareness down your skull, just to be aware, not to do, just to be aware and relax. Relax your forehead, your eyes, your sinus cavity, <coughs> relax your nose, and your ears. Bring your awareness to your cheeks and your jaw, your tongue, your throat. And as you're aware, just relax. Let it go. No need to hold on. No need to hold on. Two or four, just relax. And then relax your neck and your shoulders. Nothing to do, just to notice and relax. <clears throat> Maybe there's something in your neck that's tight, and if so, let it loosen. Maybe there's something that's wound up in your shoulders, and if so, just let it unwind. Maybe there's something that you're holding on to. It's okay to let it go. Just be aware, notice, and re relax. <clears throat> Bring your awareness to your throat and relax. To your chest and relax. Relax your heart, your lungs, relax your liver, your stomach, all of your internal organs. Just bring your awareness to them and relax. Relax your stomach, relax your intestines, relax your reproductive organs. <clears throat> your derriere. Just let it go and relax. <clears throat> relax your back. Those long muscles that go up and down your back. Just bring your awareness to them and relax. The 
there's anything tight, let it loosen. If it's wound up, let it unwind. If you're holding on to something, it's okay to let go. Relax all of your vertebrae, your discs, your ribs, your pelvic bones, just relax. Relax your arms and your elbows, your forearms. Relax your wrists and relax your hands. Take a moment and put these wonderful hands in white light. Be grateful for all that they do, their dexterity, their nimbleness, their flexibility, for all of the things that they pick up and move, all that they do for you. Thank them. Your beautiful, healthy hands. Relax your hips, your buttocks. Relax your thighs and your knees. Relax your calves and your ankles and your feet. And place your feet in white light. And think about all the wonderful things that they do for you. They carry you through this world. <coughs> they're strong, they're flexible, they're supportive. <coughs> Just bring your awareness to your feet. Thank them. And relax. And simply allow your attention to scan your body and notice if there's anything left that is tense or tight. And if there is, just give it a little attention and let it relax. Let it loosen, let it go. And in that state of relaxation, feel the weight of your body on your chair. It's a good chair. Or feel the weight of your body on the floor. Feel how the floor supports the chair. The chair supports you. The floor supports you. And feel down under this floor down to the mother below, the earth, that is always supporting us, always holding us up, and at the same time holding us close. There's nothing that we need to do. We can simply let go and relax. You can listen to the sound of my voice. Let it in your heart. You're perfect. You're precious. You're whole and complete just the way you are. You come from the light. You come from the love. You are blessed. And you are love. You're a part of all that is. You're a part of the earth and the wind and the sky. 
You come from spirit. You are spirit. You are light. You are life. You are lo love. You're perfect. Just the way you are. You are precious. Just the way you are. You are light. And love. You are the joy of all life. The angels sang on the day you came. The trumpets blew and all of life <coughs> celebrated you. Because you're perfect. You're precious. You are whole and complete just the way you are. You are light because you come from the light. You are love, because you come from the love. Be the light. Be the love. It lifts you. It carries you over every obstacle. It carries you to the heights where you belong, where you are free. You are free to be perfect, precious, Love, whole, <clears throat> complete, just the way you are. The arms of love hold you. The presence of spirit lifts you. And all is well. You are a part of all that is. You are a part of everyone, everything that has ever been, and everything yet to be. You are the love of life the light of life. You are a part of the sunrise, of the mountains, of the wind and the stars. You are a part of all that is You are a part of God, and God in you, as you, is perfect. Your true nature is spiritual. 
<coughs> because you are made out of spirit. You are a part of all that is. There is a boundless good in which you live. A heavenly state. You are a perfect being. Your mind is the mind of God. It is pure spirit. This spirit guides you into greater and greater levels of peace, happiness, and success. Into joy, love, and perfect life. Because you are perfect. You are precious. You are perfect spirit. Just the way you are. You are a part of all that is. You come from the light. You are made out of love. You are whole and complete just the way you are. All is well. All is well. You live in the heart of God. You are always safe. You are always loved. You are always blessed. You are a spiritual being made out of spirit. You are a being of light. You are made out of light. You are a being of love. You are made out of love. You are precious. <coughs> whole and complete just the way you are. All of your affairs are in the hands of spirit. All of your affairs are filled with goodness, love, and wisdom. You trust, and all is well. You are always guided. You are led into pathways of peace, of goodness, divine intelligence whispers whatever you need to know and whatever you need to do. <clears throat> whatever you are looking for finds you. Whatever you are seeking <coughs> is seeking you. Whatever belongs to you comes into your world right now. It claims you. It knows you. It rushes to you. All the good that belongs to you, all of your birthright divine inheritance 
has found you. It recognized you. It rushes to you. It fills up your life with goodness, with blessings, with peace and joy. Because you're perfect. Because you're precious. Because you come from the light. And you are the light. Because you are God's own. Because you are whole and complete just the way you are. That which is your good, truth, love, wisdom, and power goes forth from you. It makes your way clear. That which is good, truth, love, wisdom, and power comes back to you in every area of your life. Your life is filled, full to overflowing with goodness, with blessings, with truth, with love, with wisdom, and with power. You are lifted. You are free. You are God's own. God is right where you are. God is what you are. All that God has is yours right here and right now. <coughs> it fills you. It overflows you in light, in love, in health, in wholeness, in joy, because you are perfect, you are precious, you are the light, and you are the love, you are free, and you are blessed. This has always been the truth of you, and it will always be so. All of life loves you. All of life lifts you, and all is well. Take a deep breath and let it out. And begin to feel the air around your body. Ever so gently bring your awareness to the chair or the floor beneath you. Maybe you feel your hands. Maybe you move your fingers a little bit. Maybe you start to just shift in your body as you bring your awareness back to the room, back to your body. There are people in the room there are tables, the floor is beneath your feet. Feel how solid that floor is. And bring your awareness back into your physical form 
knowing that you can always go to that place. It is always with you, because it is you. Take another deep breath. And as the air comes in your body and goes back out, feel yourself being more solid, more back in your body, more back in the room. Move your feet a little bit. Feel the floor under you. Feel the chair or the floor beneath you. Notice the people around you. The cool air on your skin. Bringing your awareness back into the room, back into your bodies. Here we are at Center for Spiritual Living, <coughs> Asheville, North Carolina, planet Earth, the Milky Way galaxy, <laughs> one universe layer. And when you're comfortable, open your eyes, coming back into the room, and back into your bodies. Back into the room. So we're going to start off with the foyer light. <coughs> and as the light comes on, just notice that light is a part of the physical experience. Here we go. Bringing your awareness back into your body and back into form. Open your eyes. Move your body a little bit. There you go. <clears throat> now we're going to open or turn on the kitchen light. Just that one kitchen light. There we go. Oh yeah, nothing like light to bring you back. <laughs> Didn't even get really dark. Boy, the time is changing. The sun is going down. It's almost 9 o'clock. Ooh, she made a reference to time. <laughs> oh, man, we were out there on the beams and the music. Open up your eyes. Is everybody back? I'm going to leave it like this for a minute, Breezy. I just want to make sure I can see everybody's eyes. Yeah. Sometimes we don't want to come back, and I can appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andy <laughs> said she had a great time. Okay. I'm going to leave it just like that for a few minutes. So. Everybody look down at the floor. <laughs> Everybody look up at the ceiling. Orient yourself in space. Everybody look at the wall with the windows. Notice how far away you are from that wall. And then look at the wall with the kitchen and the bathroom doors. And notice how far away you are from that wall. Look back down at the floor. Does anyone have waves in the floor? Mm -hmm. This is a serious question. Does anyone's floor go off at an angle? Okay, good, good, good. You don't want to be driving on a wavy road. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So how was that? <coughs> Michaela. It was hot. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. What ex Sandy? I don't know. No, 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 no. 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 I am in total command of the lights here. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy. Bright green and purple. I don't know if it was lights or if it was flowers and plants, but it was just bright green and purple. And wonderful. I see. Wonderful. Green and purple. Great. Great. Who else? 
Sue. It was a lovely experience. Um, I had, in, I was listening to your voice, and then it kind of like went to a place where it, it was just like a, on a feeling realm, where mm. things felt so full and just so almost like bursting with this, you know, this really beautiful feeling, which is which I don't feel often, and it was really, really powerful. And at some point, it, it just, there was so much that other people had to be included. Mm -hmm. And I got pictures of my, my, um, my kids and my grandkids, and one by one, they just, mm -hmm. it like needed to be spread out. Oh, that's I so just beautiful. Couldn't, oh. could not contain it in myself. Wow. And it reached a point where people who had passed, like my mother and my grandmother, little by little, and there was always enough room. Uh -huh. It was never too much, it was never crowded. Mm -hmm. It was li almost liquid, wow. the way we blended mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. I've That's never beautiful. had that experience before. That's beautiful, Sue. Yeah, thank you. Good for you. Who else? Drew. <coughs> um, I didn't have any hair. Uh, I looked at uh, I looked at myself and looked around, and I had I was basically light, but within a body that was translucent blue, and I could see everything mm -hmm. and everywhere, and I was wow. just like in this, and I could see like light emanating from different centers, and I was just like, oh, this is. Mm. That's great. Mm. That's great. That's who we really are. But there was no hair, though. Who else? Then somebody cut me off. Cheryl. Um, I, I, similar to Kate, I felt myself as a baby being mm -hmm. held and in a very safe place. And that felt really, really uh, unusual for me and very grateful that it was a very safe and loving uh, place, but it evolved to be me. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's all we ever want. That's yeah. all anybody ever wants. Is to be safe and be loved. And that's our true nature. Yeah. yeah. Who else? Yes, Sonia. My, coming back from each time we've done this, my body feels so heavy. Mm -hmm. but right now it feels heavier than it was when I left. You know? <laughs> it, it is. Being in physical form is dense and heavy and thick. And whenever we leave that consciousness, we're out there just 
light and flying and feeling wonderful. So yes, the, the difference between that is very noticeable. But I think it's really good for your physical body. <laughs> Who else? This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Um, the meditation from last week uh, is on the website. Now that we have a new audio recorder, the audio of this should be on our website sometime in the next couple of days. I don't know when the video is going to get up there, but it's all dark anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so if you want to go back and listen to that over and over again, you are welcome to do that. Don't think <coughs> that your process needs to be the exact same way that it was tonight. It can be very different. Or it can take you exactly where you were before. But this is our true state. And given half a chance, we will go there. I did start to put some um, different kinds of ideas in there of being divinely guided and directed, being lifted up over any seeming obstacle, those kinds of things. Because while I've got you wide open, I really want to plant some good seeds in there. Thank you. And, and it, is, it is that feeling of being loved, being innocent, and being safe that for me is the biggest healing agent that we can have. It's the first two steps of treatment. And the first two steps of treatment, recognizing the presence of spirit and knowing that that is what I am, can heal anything. Anything. And if you don't know about treatment, spiritual mind treatment, John is teaching a class on Wednesday nights. The video of the class is already up on the website of last Wednesday. And the audio not working was the reason we got a new recorder. So, so that's up there if you want to watch it. But this thing where we can open up to a higher reality that is what we are and let go of anything that is unlike it and be in the light and the love of spirit as us is amazing. Not only does it feel wonderful, but it manifests things, it heals things, it changes things. And thank you for being willing to open up, to show up, to open up, because you never know what's going to happen in here. People may all of a sudden start levitating around the room. <laughs> Anybody else have anything they want to share? Okay, then very mindfully, Breezy, one switch. Mm -hmm. <coughs> close your eyes, close them. Yes. Yes. This is because I really want you to be able to drive. <laughs> I really, really want you to be able to drive. I feel very responsible for putting you under. And I feel very responsible for bringing you back. <laughs> Have your pupils contracted? Okay, everybody's okay? Yes. Kristen's not. Kristen, I know that all is well, and you were just filled with a little bubble of light and love over there. So before we go, humor me one more time. Look up at the ceiling. Look down at the floor. Does everyone have a straight, flat floor? Yes. Good. Look at the whiteboards in the front of the room, and notice how far away you are from those boards. And then turn around and look at the wall in the back of the room. And notice the difference in distance. Do you get that there's a difference? Mm -hmm. Good, you can go. <laughs>